Hello and welcome to part three of chapter two. And in this episode, we'll be looking at the mouth. So since last time, um, I've done a bit of work to our robot character. So you notice he's kind of got a new head. He's got this kind of new screen that fills the entire face. Uh, the reason I put this kind of like blue screen um, is basically when I was trying to do the mouth, I was thinking of LEDs and all that. Um, however, the sort of time it takes to create that um, would just be longer than kind of I've got to do this tutorial series with. So all I've just done is just made, I've just replaced it with a screen, a basic line, and we'll be animating and creating different expressions for each of the ah, uh, 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 noises, <laughs> if that makes sense. So if we look back at our character template, which again, this new updated version will be down in the video description, you'll notice that under mouth, we have neutral, ah, uh, d, e, etc, etc. In fact, uh, do we have an e expression? Yes, we do. So what I did in, this is what um, a lot of animators you'll find do, is they'll basically have a little mirror. Um, in what I case, what I use is my phone. So I actually started making these expressions to the phone. So just saying ah, e, d, etc. To see how my mouth shape kind of distorted and conformed. And then for each of these layers, I'd have to draw um, that, redraw that uh, shape basically. So I want to make sure that I'm only drawing the mouth, obviously, because that's the only part we're going to be animating when we talk. Everything else will be controlled by um, the other triggers and other behaviors within um, Couch Animator. So I've done that for, to sort of save the legwork, I did it all in um, Illustrator. I've created this basic sort of line here. And I just sort of started to deform the points to um, try and replicate a kind of some sort of general face mouth movements. Tried a few different ideas, like the idea of a line, the idea of a kind of deforming shape screen itself. Um, but in the end, I've kind of gone for the uh, just general line uh, on a screen effect. So I've saved that um, PSD. You also notice that you've now got eyebrows, although only one of the eyebrows seems to actually be working. Um, so we'll have to fix that as well. So, and also it seems to be going a bit off screen. So again, we'll be looking at how to fix this. Um, and also as I go, ah, ah, or ooh, the uh, mouth disappears. And that will be again because of the way that our Photoshop file is set up. So for certain expressions, you'll find that we'll need more than one frame. So let me just, here we go. So when we look at the, um, uh, or uh noise is actually we want two frames we want um, a transition stage so uh our mouth moves between the two noises uh, uh, or the u and the h so we need two frames to represent that movement or that sound being um, generated so the way to do that is we have um, a group folder and in that group folder we have two layers we name those layers one and two you don't have to name them one and two you could name them anything you want um, as long as the hierarchy order is kind of, you want it from top to bottom. Again, we could make it bottom to top within Spark and we'll show you how to do it in a second. Um, but we want to basically just have a number of frames and we're going to have it cycle through those frames to perform the animation. It is the same principle that we'll use later on when we start adding in more advanced um, behaviors, such as like glitching screens or animation triggers. Um, but for now, we're just doing it for the basic mouth movements. We've also done it for um, woo or woo and ah. So again, these have two sort of key, two or three keyframes in, and it's going to transition between each of these frames uh, as the noise is made um, and the detector, well, the voice is detected within the program. So I'm just going to go back to Cat Animator. So, like I said, I've just saved it as a .psd. I import it into my Cat Animator project, and I'm going to go to Rig. So if you look at my uh, rig setup here, you'll notice that we have all of our layers here invisible except for neutral. But what I want to do is I want to make and want to fix the ah, the woo and the uh sounds. So these are ones that um, have multiple layers or multiple animations on. So these little group folders here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click uh, underneath. So you notice know, you've got these three little um, icons here. You've got one for uh, handles, one for behaviors and one for triggers. We're going to be adding a behavior. So with A selected, I'm going to go over to my properties panel. 
I'm going to scroll down and go to behaviors and I'm going to click on the little plus button and I'm going to choose cycle layers and I want to cycle the layers um, when triggered now this is where we can choose our layer order so we're going to go top to bottom one to two if your layer order is different you can go from uh, bottom to top so again that's down to the way you set up your project and I want to advance every fr one frame so this is how fast it transition through the frames if you had uh, 24 frames you'd have 24 frames per second essentially uh, so you might want to adjust your speed depending on how many um, how fast you want the animation to play I want this to cycle just once so it plays through the top to bottom cycle and it ends in the last frame and I'm also going to tell it to hold on the last layer just so um, it doesn't just disappear when we are still making the oh uh noise and it wants to sort of hang around a little bit and then return to neutral if you remember, whenever we finish making a sound, it will always return to the neutral expression uh, when there's no sound detected. Okay, let the cycle finish. And that's basically our add done. And I'm going to do the same for the uh. So behavior, cycle layers, hold on last frame. I'm going to go from top to bottom, cycle once, X, and then the same for the woo. So this is uh, similar, like I said, of how we're going to be doing our more advanced animations later on. There we go. And I'm also just going to check my eyebrows. So I can see here I've got a problem with the way I've set my files up. So I actually duplicated the left eyebrow, but I forgot to merge the two layers down. That won't be the case uh, with the file that we're going to sort of um, send uh, in the description down below. So I'm just going to quickly fix that for now. Um, and I'll just turn this layer off it's not actually uh, active. I'm going to go back to record and now as I move my eyebrows the eyebrows are raised as I talk and go ah ah you'll see it, ah it moves between those two frames or ooh 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 woo woo ah sorry so as I talk now you should start to see the character's mouth move and again this will look a bit easier a bit easier to do with more organic or humanoid structures. Um, I'm about to try and replicate this on a kind of robot which isn't quite as um, effective. So you notice that the mouth shapes aren't quite perfect yet and again I might spend a bit more time um, in between sessions actually tweaking things and modifying the design. Um, but one thing I am going to do uh, now is I'm going to fix these eyebrows which are actually going off the screen and the same I can do with the eyes. So to do that I'm going to go over to our um, eye gaze properties here then click on the drop down and you'll notice that we have some options here for smoothing and camera strength I'm just going to reduce my camera strength a little bit so the eyes don't move quite as uh, drastically now I can also uh, adjust my smoothing so this will be how smooth it goes between one frame and another so the higher this is the sort of more of a kind of lag we get and that's also in relation to our camera strength obviously let's get to the face see if we can fix the eyebrows so here we have our eyebrow strength which are a bit too high at the moment so I'm going to just pull them down don't want to pull them down too low just pull them up a little bit so a little bit of eye movement, movement but not too much so I'm probably going to have to go quite low at ease. Say eight. So I've got a bit of eyebrow twitching, but not massive amounts. So it just has a little bit of life, but not like super expressive. If I wanted things to be more expressive, I can actually adjust the strength of things to make them more kind of pop, so to speak. Let's have a look at the lip sync. So what options we've got in there. Audio input is set correctly. We've got no physics yet enabled, which we'll be looking at uh, in a future video. And we've got no uh, tr uh, uh, sort of pins in our scene yet. So this is the stage we're at the moment. And what we're going to do now is we're going to start to um, sort of move away from the facial features and start adding in uh, physics, triggers and more dynamicness. And actually start to make this look a little bit less like um, child's first 2D animation and start to make this look a little bit more uh, kind of emotive and production grade rather than 
I did this in 30 to an hour, 30 minutes to an hour kind of time. I'm trying to sort of do this fairly speedily for these tutorials, but in between sessions I do want to spend longer on it. So again, thank you for watching. If you've got any questions, remember to comment down below and we'll be exploring, um, like I said, physics, triggers and behaviours in the next few videos. Goodbye.